Lukashenko, no to the lockdown, riots as result. On August 9, 2020, Alexander Lukashenko was re-elected president in Belarus by a large majority. Since then, there has been protests in the country that the police are trying to stop. According to the leading media, many Belarusians are dissatisfied with the election result of 80% for Lukashenko, who has ruled as president in Belarus for 26 years. Electoral fraud is suspected and recent allegations have been raised that Lukashenko would be a brutal dictator and that people would be tortured in jails. Spiegel Online titled it Uprising against Europe's last dictator. The Swiss newspaper Blick Lukashenko has demonstrated as brutally tortured. But are these the real reasons for the protests? Could it be that the uprisings are being fomented from abroad, as the president assures? Examples from the past, such as the overthrow of the government in Ukraine in 2014 and the attempted overthrow of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad, show that this is quite a common practice. In both cases, evidence showed that the riots were financed by outside forces with the involvement of foreign secret services. Just as it is now done with Lukashenko, both the then Ukrainian president Yanukovych and the Syrian president Assad were portrayed in the leading media as brutal dictators statements that proved to be completely disproportionate retrospectively. The Belarusian security authorities are now accused of violent actions against peaceful demonstrators, the same way accusations were made in Ukraine in 2014. KLATV revealed that the violence at the Ukrainian Maidan was actually caused by violent demonstrators who were deliberately smuggled in and who mingled with the peaceful demonstrators. So, if the same procedure should currently be taking place in Belarus, what could be the reason for outside interference? At a meeting on June 19, Lukashenko described attempts from abroad to destabilize Belarus and organize a second Maidan. Economic problems have been exacerbated by the current difficult global situation. However, the IMF attached conditions to urgently needed loads. Listen to President Lukashenko himself. The chairman of the National Bank is the IMF chief negotiator. What is the situation here? What do the partners want from us? We were told that it would be possible to give Belarus $940 million as fast financing. What is going on here? I would like to say, we will not dance when they play for us, for there are the demands in order to fight the coronavirus, please do the same as Italy. But I do not want it to be like in Italy. We have our own country with our own situation. According to Lukashenko, the IMF is demanding the introduction of quarantine and curfew. A research by the Italian historian, writer and investigative journalist Nicola Bizzi shows that Lukashenko's statements are plausible. Bitsi expressed the strong suspicion that his own government, namely the Italian government, was also paid under the table at the first lockdown to enforce the strictest and most catastrophic lockdown in Europe. Bitsi said, quote, I know from intelligence sources that similar offers have been made to many other European and non-European countries and I also know that many heads of state and government, including Serbian President Aleksandr Vucic, did not hesitate one bit to accept them. These well-known blackmail attempts are said to be no new thing by whistleblower John Perkins, a former economic killer and agent of the US Foreign Intelligence Agency NSA. He reports how the central banking system and the IMF have already driven many states into high levels of debt and dependence through blackmail and corruption. If Lukashenko was to respond to the IMF's demand for a lockdown, it would mean that his own economy would be enormously weakened and the need for credit would be endless. If repayment is then no longer possible, the financial elite would ransack the country without restraint. 
Conclusion. Apparently, the Belarus head of government is not willing to bow to the IMF dictates, and right away there are unrests in the country. The suspicion is at hand that these coup attempts follow a common pattern and are controlled by the media and from outside. Like in a pattern, existing grievances are often used to turn the dissatisfied population in the country against the head of government and plunge the country into chaos. Recurring scenarios take place to get rid of unwanted heads of state and take control of a country.